tonight I'm going to show you how to photograph Messier 42, the Orion Nebula, from a light polluted city. I'm here at Shelter Island, which is roughly three miles west of downtown San Diego, a part of the city that has a good amount of light pollution. My current location shows to be in between a seven and eight on the Bordel scale. Tonight, I'm gonna use my unmodified Sony A7 Mark III on the Ioptron Skyguider Pro Star Tracker to try and photograph some deep space objects in the constellation Orion. There's going to be a few challenges I'll face trying to shoot from a light polluted city like this. The first is going to be finding the North Star so I can polar align my star tracker. I have a pretty clear view to the north from my location here, but it's heavily light polluted due to the San Diego International Airport over in that direction. I'll use the Sky Guide Pro app to help me find Polaris, and then I'll be using it again later to help me locate the Orion Nebula. Another problem I'll have tonight is I can only photograph Orion while it's higher in the sky. Uh, when it gets lower towards the horizon, you'll really notice the light pollution in the photos, and you'll also get some atmospheric distortion in the shot, which will pretty much ruin the images. Lastly, I'll make sure I keep the lens hood on my lens at all times while shooting to stop any stray light from hitting the lens, maybe by a passing car or even a boat. I roughly got my camera balanced on the star tracker now, and I'm going to try to polar align the scope to the North Star using the Polar Scope Align app. It's free in the iOS store, and it's really easy to use. Now that I'm pretty sure I got it polar aligned, I'm going to move on to focusing, which actually means I have to take this lens head back off for a minute. Getting your focus on the stars can be a bit challenging, so I like to use a batten off mask to help me get a perfect focus quickly every time. It's really easy to use and only costs about $15 to $20 on Amazon.com. I'll leave a link in the description below if anyone's interested in checking one out. I highly recommend buying one of these. It'll save you a ton of time while trying to focus your camera. Adjust these little screws till it fits snugly on the end of your lens. And from there, all you gotta do is find a bright star, preferably right next to the object or in the object that you plan on shooting. Tonight, I used the bright star Owl Attack in the Constellation Orion. It's actually in my frame in this shot. I like to use the Sky Guide app to help me find and identify different things in the night sky. It's free and really useful, and I'll leave a link down in the description if anyone's interested in checking that out. Once you open the app, you can see that in the bottom right hand corner, there's a search option, which makes everything really easy. I'm gonna search for the Orion constellation. Once you start to type it in, it pops up, you can select it, and there it is. You can see that Orion is already pretty high in the sky after sunset, and it's just in the southwest portion of the sky. Zooming in, and you can see the star that I'm focusing on, Alna Attack, which happens to be the star all the way to the left of Orion's belt. The Batonoff mask actually creates these diffraction spikes with an X, and the center line, as you adjust your focus, it'll move to the left or to the right of the X. All you have to do is adjust it till it's directly in the center, so you have an X with a line through it. Then you'll know that you have a really precise focus on the stars that you're shooting. And that's it for focusing with the Batonoff mask. It's really easy to do and definitely something you're going to want to get done right before starting your imaging session. It looks like I got focused pretty quickly tonight. I got my focus so I can take off the Batonoff mask and replace it with the lens hood. Now that I got my lens focused, my camera balanced on the star tracker and it's polar aligned, I'm going to dial in my set. Well, I already kind of fucked up. It took me a little bit longer than I thought to get all set up. Now I gotta do what's known as a meridian flip where I actually flip the camera and the counterbalance to opposite sides now that Orion has moved to more of the southwestern sky as opposed to just the southern sky. Oh man, okay, let's get this going.
finally, I got my composition figured out, Orion's back in frame. I'm just doing a couple of test exposures to check my focus and to double check some camera settings and then it'll be time to roll. The camera's been rolling now for a couple minutes. It's finally up and shooting and I'm so excited. I went with a 20 second exposure. Anything longer than that was just kind of washing out the center of the nebula. The Orion Nebula is what they refer to as a high dynamic range nebula. It's really hard to actually photograph because you want to try to do longer exposures to get the faint gases around the sides, but at the same time, you don't want to go too long to blow out the center of it. That's a real common mistake that I see all the time, and it's definitely something I want to avoid. Depending on the camera and lens that you're using, your results may vary a little bit from what I'm getting. I have the Sony a7 Mark III with a Canon 70-200 shooting at f3.5. It goes all the way down to 2.8, but I wanted to stop it down a little bit to avoid getting some of the coma and to keep the stars a little sharper. For ISO, I'm doing 1250. You gotta be careful not to go too high with the ISO or too low. If you go too low, you might not get the details of the nebula. And if you go too high, it'll create too much noise, which you can remove a little bit of the noise when stacking the images later, but not if you go too high with the ISO. The camera's been shooting for just over an hour now with the 200 millimeter lens. And as you can see behind me, some really thin clouds are starting to pop up. It's really clear to the Southwest where Orion is in the sky right now, but I feel like I'm running out of time. So I'm gonna switch lenses to the Sigma 150 to 600 and try to get something in the 600 millimeter range. Fingers crossed I get at least an hour of shooting with that lens to try to get a decent shot. We'll see what happens. I finally got my lens changed. It's at 600 millimeters. Did my polar alignment again. I balanced the whole camera. I focused it and I even had to adjust my settings slightly because of the different lens. This lens at 600 millimeters only goes down to f6.3 as to where I was shooting at f3.5 with the 200 millimeter lens on there. I also slightly adjusted my shutter speed. It's now doing a 30 second exposure and the shots look amazing at 600 millimeters. The camera's imaging Orion is still high in the southwestern sky. I don't see any clouds in that direction right now. Actually, a lot of the clouds that started to roll in just disappeared. So it's still going. I have about another hour, hour and a half that I can image Orion. Fingers crossed I get at least an hour of that time in. It looks like that's about it for imaging Orion tonight. It's a little after 11 p.m. and it's getting pretty low on the horizon. It's in that light pollution zone now to where I'm probably not getting any usable images. All right, now we can start reviewing the photos from the shoot. First up, we have a single raw image that was taken with the Canon 70 to 200 millimeter lens at 200 millimeters. You can definitely tell that I was shooting under some heavily light polluted skies. I might've pushed the 20 second exposure time a little too far and blown out the center like I was trying to avoid while trying to get more of the faint gas around the outside. After stacking 112 images in Starry Sky Stacker and messing around with the image in Photoshop for a little bit, this is what I was able to come up with. The center is a little more blown out than I would have liked and the overall image is pretty dark, but still not bad considering I was shooting from the middle of a city. You can see M43 right next to the Orion Nebula and just to the right you see NGC 1977, the Running Man Nebula. If we look at the other side of the image you can see a very faint flame nebula right next to the bright star Alan attack that we focused on. Unfortunately I wasn't able to get any detail out of the Horsehead Nebula right next to Alan attack. Moving on to my 600 millimeter shot, you can actually see quite a bit more detail out of the raw image here. And after stacking and spending a couple minutes on it in Photoshop, the image really starts to come to life. 
I was a little disappointed with my images from this night, especially when I got home and compared them to another image taken last year from my backyard just a couple miles north of downtown. In this image you can see a lot more detail in both M42 and M43, as well as NGC 1977. While it is possible to get a decent image from a big city with a lot of light pollution like we have here in San Diego, it's still definitely worth it to drive an hour or two away from the lights if possible. This is my first ever image of M42 taken from two hours east of San Diego in the desert under a Bortle 2 sky using the same camera, same lens, and same star tracker. And as you can see, there's a lot more detail on all the nebula in the image. Hope you enjoyed watching this video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. And as always, please hit the like button to help support my channel. Thanks for watching.